As far as stories that mean a lot to me, this one means a lot to me because we actually got a chance to participate in the justice for getting justice for this baby that you guys see on my screen, Billy Simone Williams, beautiful little girl from originally from Stockton, California, who lost her life due to just the most horrible circumstance of being beaten to death. And we were responsible for at least getting one of the people who we believe committed the murder and beat this little girl to death, which is the stepmother, Takesha Williams. And um, we did a ton of interviews on this channel over the course of a few days, about four years ago, which prompted the stepmother to send me an email, was concerned about the things that people were saying about her and her family and her name. And so we had a little bit of a conversation. She agreed to come on. She agreed to be live. She consented to that and spoke with us and kind of told us her perspective. Throughout multiple conversations we've had, we were able to secure information that we believe helped secure a justifiable arrest. And now we also have a conviction of charges as well, which that is the hugest part. We actually have a conviction. So this story has actually now closed out. This is a conclusion. So I want you guys to take a listen at this and listen with an open mind as well as an open heart. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and your evening. Continue to support the AFC. Links are in the description box if you guys want to support what we do. We have actually gotten justice. Please continue to help grow this channel, our audience, and any way that you can. Let me let you guys take a look at this. Let me give a shout out to all of my Stockton, California family and friends out there, to all the people I've ever talked to, came on the channel, sent me documents, emailed me anything. Thank you, and I love you all so much. This is my interview with, uh, with Alice, who was the aunt of the little girl, Billy Simone Williams. All right, if you would, do me a favor and uh, let me know or, or let the people know who I'm talking to right now. Alice, the I'm the auntie um, of little Billy Simone Williams. Um, I'm her father's sister, her father's oldest sister. Okay, we're talking about uh, uh, what they call Big Billy. Y'all refer to him as Big Billy, right? Bill, yeah, Billy, Big Billy, Bill Bill, yeah, or just Billy. Okay, so this has kind of been yeah. a long time in, in the making as far as from when this case first started here, roughly about four years ago. You, you said about four years ago? Yeah, about four years ago. It's compared to May 23rd, 2020. Yeah, compared to then and where we are now, like a lot of things have happened and really the, the news and police and the courts hadn't been putting out a lot of information and that's really why there have been no updates since they have been in jail. Um, do you want to kind of tell as far as like where we are right, like right now? Um, they, they both took, um, well, uh, yeah, they both, I guess you could call it plea agreements. Um, but his was called something else. It was called a something else agreement. I forget, I forget, but, um, hers was, um, they both basically took plea agreements right now and, um, was sentenced to 15 years to life, 15 years to life. Um, and that's based on a, I know Takesha got a murder charge, right? Yes. And, and so did Billy get the exact same thing as what she got? The second degree, they got second degree murder, second degree murder. Okay. Yeah. So I know that we, we kind of partially discussed this a little bit offline, but with regard to how California does things, I'm not exactly sure. But since this is not federal state time, I think they have to do roughly about maybe 80 to 85 percent of their time. So they're really realistically, since they've been in four years, get time served, they could be out in like four or five years. That sound about right? Um, yeah, somewhere around there, I believe. But what the, the, to life? I mean, anywhere, anywhere from fifteen years to life, or whatever. Re really, so they don't have to necessarily let them out after like after so long, after fifteen years or whatever. To the maximum time for them, to, like the eighty-five percent or whatever, they don't have to necessarily let let you out. That's just saying that. That's just saying that you got all the you got any anywhere in between fifteen to, um, um, to life. They could let you out at any point in time. You know, during that time. 
So and I guess it got it got to do with your behavior and stuff like that. Or if like when it's time when you go to the board or something, if the families that are, that's affected come or whatever and say something or whatever or whatnot, then they work off off that. Because I thought like I might have read and I might have read this wrong, but I thought at some point I read some information that said like like a life sentence is technically like what they call. Um, like a natural life sentence where they would assume that a person's life would naturally end within a certain time frame. Like, I'm not really sure how that is, but basically they'll be, they'll be able to apply for parole. Parole. Yeah. Okay. Got you. So, yeah. let, me, so let me ask yeah. you this. So there is so much we miss, especially like the court stuff. Um, how many times yeah. were you actually able to make it to court yourself? Um, I was I was able to make it up there, like, cause um first like when they first start having court, they um um like right right in the beginning I sit there I I came in the beginning, but I wouldn't go inside the court thing I wouldn't go up inside the court thing because I didn't want to be around like everybody all, all her family them and all that stuff like that or whatever just by how everybody was acting just weird and I know me you know so I stayed out the way but during the when it was going leading up to now or whatever. I sit there, I went and they kicked me out. They kicked me out of court. They kicked me out, said I couldn't come there. I think if not, I think probably like last, if not last year, like the end of the year before, like the end of 2022 or something like that. They kicked me out, told me I could not come up in there. Then they had the court dates so far apart. Like it'd be, they'd go in the beginning of this year and wouldn't go to way the end of, you know, the end to the end of the year or something. But they kicked me out a couple of years ago. I'll say that. And told the judge, I mean, the prosecutors noticed me walk in and, um, well, she noticed me walk in and she told her attorney, then her attorney told the prosecutor, uh, gave the prosecutor a letter or a note in the courtroom. And the prosecutor asked them if they could, if asked the judge if they could approach, and they went up there, approached whatever, said what they said. And then the judge got on the microphone and told me that I can't be inside the courtroom or whatever, because I was going to be possibly called as a witness or whatever. And from there, I could never go back up inside the courtroom. So, okay. you know, my mom and my auntie, them, oh, well, no matter of fact, after I got kicked out, because first my mom went in, then I went in because we had the kids with us. So we had to take turns. And then well, after they kicked me out, they kicked my mom out. And when she went, once she went back in there, then they, they kicked her out. But the first time they didn't kick her out. So to me, it, I mean, then um, he, at that time he had a private lawyer. And that lawyer that he had, she came outside in the hallway and she told me and my mom, like, um, that prosecutor, that's his way of, of doing, I mean, that's, the, that's, um, technically that's how he tried to usually do stuff to, I guess, to like, I don't know, to, to hide stuff or so we wouldn't hear so much or something. I don't know. But she said that he, um, she basically agreed that he was wrong for that or whatever, but that's his little, a little technique he uses, uh, you know? So I was like, okay, whatever, you know? And after that, my any my any them is more so the ones that always went up in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's probably another person. That's probably another person that you that will probably that you probably want to talk to too, because she was in there faithfully, because she stayed right down the street. She was in there faithfully at the courthouse um, all the time. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we could we could definitely do that, and um, I'm 100% open to doing that. So let me ask you this, like. So they never even got to the portion of trial with this whole thing. No, they well they had actually set a trial. Um, they set a trial date. They had set a trial date, but like I was I was telling you before, when some guy or somebody was inside the jail messing with him or something, from what I hear, some boy was messing with him, um, study messing with him or whatever, and and saying stuff about his the, his case and stuff like that about his baby and stuff, and um, they end up getting into it or whatever. They sent my brother and the boy to the hole. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess then it's just, it's just a fact that right there just really just messed him up all the way up or whatever, because our, at first he was already in like just regular, I guess, population or whatever. And um, where, you know, he got had a more of a way to like co communicate with people and or with the family and stuff like that or whatever. But now they put him in a hole and they i mean i guess that got to him you know it, it just got to him and mom and he told my mom that he was just he was just he was done he was tired or whatever and he was just ready to give up but from uh, one of my cousins i'm gonna have i'm gonna call her too because her and um uh, my sister and them they was sitting there telling me how that they kept that somebody they just said they kept sending people to him and telling him basically like 
oh, if you don't do the, if you don't take this plea, this is what's going to happen to you. If you know, if you don't do this, if you, this is what's going, this is the time you're going to get in this and like study just like on him or whatever. So he just said, he just give up or whatever. He, he don't want to, um, you know, do it or whatever. And he, and he sit there and told my mom, like my, uh, my kids know that I love them or whatever. And I would never do nothing to hurt him. The only thing I'm guilty of is not paying attention to my kids and, my mom said she if he content she like she content with it too and she, and that's fine you know so mm -hmm. but that's and i just had to just let it go i'm i just have to let it go or whatever even though me i don't i don't want to i don't want to just have it just let it off that easy because i i know because something something tells me that it's a big a way bigger picture than it's bigger than my brother it's bigger than my brother it's bigger than the whole case with the as far as our county and uh different players up in it you know like with CPS and all these stuff, because CPS and them, they still never made a statement as to why they never filed charges or, or um, um, anything towards um, the girl when she was found um, found to be the perpetrator in two other cases with kids or whatnot that we didn't know nothing about because we didn't even know her, you know. But at the same time, those two cases that that they meant, I mean, that, that um, CPS and them know about and they named her as a perpetrator. Wait, the wait, wait, um, the hold, on, hold, on. hold on, they named who as a perpetrator? I want to make sure that we know. Takesha. Okay. To Keisha Carrier. Okay. I want to make yeah. sure. I want to make they sure. They named her. Everybody yeah. Knows exactly who we talking about. To Keisha Carrier. Yeah. But and, and I got the original, um, her original CPS packet from um, that CPS gave her from those from that case, one of the cases where she burnt the little one year old baby at her ex husband's child. So, but in the in the what you call them in the the and when I, um the, when they sentenced them, I got to go in that courtroom. I got to go in that courtroom then and got kicked out <laughs> once again the bailiff kicked me out for shaking my head you know and um because when i should i was shaking my head because the prosecutor at that time he was sitting um he was saying that um he mentioned takesha carriers past cps records um from 2006 and i believe 2009 or something like that and he gonna say well those two um he said the williams family had abuse in their family for years from 2006 to 2000 and whatever so and, and now what um he he he's sorry that they didn't do nothing back then but now's the time where he want to do they want he, um they, they ain't gonna fail to do um you know they ain't gonna fail by um process i mean by convicting or whatever because of those kids but that wasn't the william family though that was takisha's so it was like he put balls all that yeah. yeah. So, so basically, what you're saying is that they charged them as a family and not her as an individual for yes for the things that people were accusing her of doing to a whole nother yeah person. for a whole nother yeah a whole nother person's whole nother relationships he he got he he gathered all that together and said well they're linked and, and it, that's what he was he he just kept yelling it so he knew he he knew he was wrong he absolutely knew he was wrong he kept sitting he he kept just just um emphasizing it just st study saying they link together they're one they're one so everything that goes on um, that went on from 2006 whatever is it go all equals out to them or whatever because they're they are married but no it don't equal out to them because my brother didn't even know her back then and and if and and the judge had to sit there and even tell him like um hold on I mean, you need to stop because we're um this is just sentencing this is not a trial you know so it, it's like it didn't make sense to me as to how he how he sit there and presented that and and just put it off on my brother too you know and and i mean honestly i just feel like they knew for sure that they had nothing on him but they they wasn't gonna try to let him out at all for the simple fact they know that they made so many mistakes with just cps with her her sister working for the uh, sheriff's um department for all these different things that that i found out and stuff or whatever her sister being at the crime scene all types of stuff or whatever hold on wait wait we they, need to pause right there because i want to i want to get into that now, real quick, I didn't get a chance to do this at the beginning, but you know you're being recorded, right? Yeah. You do agree to be recorded. Yeah, I agree to be recorded. Okay, because you, I mean, yeah. I, for obvious reasons, because I had to go through this with Takesha, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I, I need, I, I'm, I to, this is Alice make, Marie Hall, I <laughs> and I consent to being recorded. I need to make yeah. sure, because California law, one party state, I need to make sure that you know that I will be putting this on YouTube at some point yeah all right cool yeah so all right let's get back to that point now you were saying that her sister or a relative of hers works for the for the police department can you kind of explain that um her a sister her one of her sisters worked for uh the sheriff's um, department in stockton or whatever and uh takisha so one of takisha's one of one of takisha carrier's sisters 
worked for the sheriff department in Stockton, California. And she was out at the crime scene the day, the day it happened, the day they arrested my brother. And what the news KCRA, the news reporter them put in the, um, in the newspaper or on online or whatever that they didn't arrest my brother several days later. They arrested him that same day. They arrested, they arrested him, um, him that same day. So I don't know why they put, they arrested him several days later. They re arrested him that day. They only arrested him when they knew that the mom, the biological mother and the stepmother was inside the house, period. So the, bio and, and that, the biological mother of Billy Williams is uh, Letitia Titus. Letitia Titus. Yeah, Letitia Titus is biological mother and Takesha Carrier is the stepmother. Got you. Yeah. So... Yeah, they and they knew both of them was. I mean, they knew that both of them was in the house, and they never they didn't arrest none of them at all. You know, so I don't, I don't understand that. So they got a lot of they got a lot of information wrong. I mean, so let me ask you this because I got a a couple different ways I want to go with this. First of all, in your opinion, we're not going to speak on facts because we don't. There's a lot of things we still don't know because this didn't yeah. trial. It didn't get as far yeah. as we wanted to. But nonetheless, couldn't you or do you believe that that plays a conflict of interest if Takesha Carrier Williams or whatever her name is, she wants to be called, but we know who we're referring to. Couldn't that be seen as a conflict of interest if she has a relative that's working within the police department, in your opinion? Yeah, that'd be a conflict of interest, at least to me, from what I heard, of, what I read of their ex um, ethnic ethics and, and standards and all that stuff. Yeah, that, that'd be a, a, a complete conflict, conflict of interest, you know, and um, remember when on the messages that I mean, the photos I sent and we and I read them off on my interview, my first interview, and it was saying um, the girl that was the one, the message that you circled and the girl said, um, oh, some about putting a baby in the closet and making that her her um, her time to where she um, her punishment or whatever. OK. Well, I, I got um, I had reached out to that lady and I asked her, like, what, what is I asked her, like, what is this? Why would you sit there and say that? Well, she she sent me messages back and was talking to me or whatever. And um, she told me that her aunt, her auntie is the one that worked for the CPS. So that's the, the CPS lady that they know that they know, too. You know, so I was like, oh, wow, I still got all those messages and stuff, too. Yeah. So the fact trust me, I was doing my digging. I was reaching out. OK, so let me ask you this, because that seems to be very weird how you had you, you clearly seem to have a pattern for children being hurt under Takesha's watch. So you had a previous mm -hmm. situation before before Billy's murder and abuse death that happened and nothing seemed to have come of that besides just mere accusations, but it didn't seem like they really uh, pushed forward with that case. And then you have this happen, but it doesn't seem like the courts took that as this appears to be a pattern of abuse. And this is pointing towards one person. Like, why do you believe, like, what do you believe actually happened in your opinion? What do you believe happened that day? I believe that she, did what I mean she did whatever she did to her or whatnot and from everything that I was gathering and what people were sitting there saying I don't I honestly don't think that she passed away on the 23rd like they said like they said I believe that was the time where they was contacted or whatever but I believe that she it happened the day before on the 22nd of March I mean of uh, May okay. you know by uh, because let's yeah let's, let's talk about that let's talk about the day before leading up to the day of the discovery where was your brother where was Takesha? what do you believe happened he was um it, he was uh he had went to another one of my brother's houses one of our other brother's houses and um because they had just had a baby so he went to go see the baby because they made him the they made billy the godfather and um while he was there visiting with them with my other brothers with our other brother and the baby Takesha called him and was going off on him on the phone well when he got off the phone he ended up leaving my brother in them house billy he ended up going back home or whatever back to the house i believe when he got back to the house then is when he seen he found out that he seen everything seen what she had did or whatever because before he left the house if, if oh you go back on one of your interviews my um sister-in-law she um she called in and she said that my brother had um she, she talks about when my brother um 
He said he needed to get away. From, he came to their house, said he needed to get away from the house because Keisha was complaining about the baby taking a muffin off the counter top. So he had left. But what he should have did to me, he should have sit there and took her with him, you know? So I believe that when she, when he got back home, she had already did what she did. And it was like, it, it was just crazy. But I, I'm no, I, I, some tell me in my heart that she, if she did what she did, she had some of her family members come to that house. There was no way possible not one of her sisters them came to that house and was in there with my brother at the same time. Somebody in her family was there. Peer, somebody had, somebody else, in my opinion, somebody else had to been there or whatever, you, you know, for when my brother came home. Cause she wasn't gonna just sit there. He, my brother wasn't gonna sit there and let her sit there and do nothing to her, his baby or whatever. And she wasn't gonna sit there and do something to the kid. And knowing that my, um, to my niece, knowing that my brother was coming back home without calling somebody else in her family to be up over there. It, and she, and, and that's just plain and simple. I, I know somebody else was inside that had to be inside that house and the house. They never sit there and close it off as a crime scene. They never dusted for fingerprints. They never asked the family. member. They never even reached out to none of the family, none of us, at least, you know, none of my, none of my brother family, my, um, his other daughter that was in the system, still in the system. I, we tried to get her. They told us that we couldn't get my niece out of CPS custody because it was an open investigation. Just, I mean, they treated us like we were criminals or something, you know? And I feel like that's all based off of the fact that her sister worked for or Takesha's sister. One of her sisters works inside the sheriff's department and stuff, you know? Okay. And I mean, it's a, it's like a wild, just, it's like still like every, it's so many unanswered questions and, and all types of stuff. It's like still a big mystery to me. That's why I wanted it to go to trial. And I begged him and begged him and everything, you know, to take it to trial. You got a lot of supporters and, and, and I mean, let everybody hear all of all the facts and everything that happened. There's no possible way just with a little bit of information that I know and, and put it together. I know that these people, uh, any people with righteous mind, righteous minds and, and, and know and that love kids and, and, and care for kids, they all going to look at it and they're going to know they're going to see that pattern that everybody else is talking about. So you just need to go to trial, you know. And it, it's just crazy. It, it's just crazy. He just gave up. He just so let gave me, up, man. So let me ask you a couple questions real quick. Let me ask you this. Who do you believe caused Billy's death? And why do you think that person did it? Oh, it's Akeisha Carrier, without a doubt. And why? Because she never liked her. She never liked my niece, not a bit. Why not? I mean, even her own interviews, her own interviews, it, she sit there and talk about, I mean, she don't even mention my niece uh, by name or nothing like that. She don't, I mean, is she's totally disconnected from any of, from both of his kids, you know? And it's like, she didn't, she just never liked them. If you look at the pictures that they ever took with family photos and stuff, she made sure that my nieces was far away from my brother and all the pictures and stuff. Or, or whatever and it, it's just or far away from her they always in the front or they in the, they way in the back or something i mean it's telltale signs when you're just looking at it people could a picture could um say a thousand things you know if you're really looking at it and me i'm nosy i'm nosy i'm curious I'm, i got questions and all the stuff like that and i want to know what's going on and i'm trying to look deeper into all of it you know and i, I don't like it when I, when i'm looking at family photos and stuff and, and kids and stuff not smiling something wrong there you know and 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 I, I i know she did it i know she did it i, I know it. she did she didn't like my baby at all and everybody i mean the messages i got so many people from his like job and stuff like that reached out to me or whatever only one of them i had to reach out to myself i didn't know who he was i just see him in a picture with my brother but i reached out to even him and asked him to you know tell me things about my brother that he knew whatever and he plain and simply said there's nothing i could tell you about your brother that you don't already know Everybody know from the from the first time we seen this what um seen what happened. Everybody knew right then that Takesha did it and Billy's getting blamed for it. My I mean my brother is a great person. Uh, I mean a good good boy. You know his daughters exactly like him. They how humble they is. How you know they attitudes they way. I mean everything is just so just like they not confrontational people. They real calm, real just relaxed and and just you know just them just good people. That's it. Just great. Just good, great people, you know, and it's like they just been ripped away from our family for absolutely nothing. Just for a conviction, a, a rate, uh, example or whatever. And it, it's crazy. And no, nobody wanted to even listen. I mean, I sent all the things that I have. I sent copies out to 
uh, to um, attorney generals and just any kind of office. I don't know who I'm supposed to contact because I'm new to this. This is something different in our family. We never had nothing like this going on in our family or whatever. And um, it's like, so I'm sending it to any kind of office I could think of these, all the copies of things I have. Only one person reached out to me and that was a public defender man. And he reached out with me telling me I had a warrant out for my arrest. So <laughs> right then I knew that was, that was all bad right there. They, they wasn't trying to hear nothing we had to say. Even when we try to call, uh, call in contact, whoever in the, um, at the, in the courts or at the district attorney's office, whatever, we were not allowed to speak to nobody, speak on behalf of nobody, nothing. We wasn't even allowed to make a victim impact statement in the, um, d at, during the sentencing. So it, it was just crazy. They treated us real messed up. It, it's just crazy. And it's like, and then if you had, had y'all sit there and was able to see the look on her face when she see the more and more of our family that came into the courtroom the day of sentencing, she was so happy. And, and I mean, she's smiling and, and swinging her hair and she was great. She was very, she was so happy because she's seen all the pain that she caused stepping in that courtroom. And with the more and more people that was walking in, she she might as well jumped up and, and start celebrating right then and there in the courtroom because she was happy. She was really happy. Let me ask you this, she, because mm -hmm. this is more or less an opinion. Do you believe that if she caused the death solely, which I, I want to get a little more into that, and like I said, I won't keep you too long, but do you believe that her intention were to cause this girl's death that where she, did she just blank out that was it accidental how do how do you feel about that with with regard to the intent cuz you know intent could be you meant to discipline the person you didn't mean to to do this or did she just flat out just didn't give a crap like what is what is your opinion about that i believe she did it on purpose I believe I believe she really did it on purpose. Do you think her because once again cause her death? Oh, her intention was to yeah, it was to cause her death for sure. It was it was to cause her death because for one, so so a, a guy inside the the um, attorney's office that the attorney that my brother had the private attorney he had at one point, a guy in there he talked to me and he t he told me. Like, um, he was the, actually the only person that really even told me m m much, as much as he did. Nobody else really tried to even talk. They just tried to whatever, just ignore me all the time. But he sit there and he told me that when the baby, when the, she, she was in the bathroom by herself with, the, with my niece. And he said that one of the kids got up in the middle of the night. So it happened like in the middle of the night. And everybody was, I guess, in bed or whatever. Said one of the kids got up in the middle of the night and went to the bathroom in the hallway. Well, when they went to that bathroom, they heard. They said they heard my niece and my and their mom inside the bathroom. They heard her mom, um, their mom talking and and to my niece, but my niece sounded like she had been crying. Okay, so they that that kid went back and laid down. Um, he said, now the other kid came, so that's why I was assuming. It, I was only assuming that it's, it had to have been the, his the twins because they the youngest. So um, she's, he said the other kid came out and went to the bathroom later on that night, went to the bathroom, okay, everything was fine, but went to their mom and dad room, which is at the other end of the hallway, went to that, um, uh, went to their room and said that their mom was laying on the floor next to my niece and my brother was sitting on the bed. So she did something to her for sure. With that man telling me, you know, and, and if I, I'm, I'm willing, I, I don't care. I could say the attorney, um, the attorney office name that he had or whatever at the time. But someone within that office told me um, and said that he was she was laying on the floor at the foot of the bed with my niece. So she's laying on the floor next side by side with her. She brought her in there to him. And, and, and I don't know if he was asleep or what. But at the time when the when the um, when the kid went in there, he said the kid said that they dad was sitting on the bed. He was in shock. He didn't, I mean, what the, I mean, what the, she just brung his, she brung his baby in there dead, you know? And this is, this is honest to God. This is some, somebody out the, one of the, um, out the, the only private attorney that he had. So he, you can look it up or whatever. The only private attorney he had out that office, somebody, that's what the, I was told. So she did that in that bathroom, you know? And with, I mean, with that time, with just that information right there, it makes no sense to me the, that they got, they did that to him. And, um, so then too, he, he also told me that 
when they was um when they was talking to when they brought like the kids in i guess during some time up in there when the prosecutors and was talking to him or whatever they said one of the the little work one of the kids he said one of the kids said he said um that they um they asked him he said usually the prosecutors and them ask you oh do you have anything else to say or whatever woo, woo, woo. once they you know at the end of whatever they, they the question and stuff he said usually kids that age will say no or oh i want my toy so I, that's uh, that's another reason why I felt like it was the twins because they the young they the babies they younger, and um, he said. But this kid said something so directly at the case that we knew that that kid had to have been coerced. He said. He said whatever. He said I can't tell you what he said. He said, but he said something so direct at the case, and then at the end of that, he's I mean, it was it was he was like, but my mom just need a little help, you know. He said, but. He said, the, he said in the prosecutor, it made the prosecutor at the end of it all, at the end of the court day, that day, he said the prosecutor came to him and told him that he didn't like that that little boy um, had said whatever it was that he said. He said, because that tells him like, as that, um, that um, tells him that he's been coerced. I don't, me personally, once that man said that, and, that, and that's honest to God truth, once that man told me that right there, I'm like, dang, so uh, right then, I didn't even know if at this point, do she have the um if they family have they kids i mean they the other kids or whatever you know mm -hmm. because i know for sure we don't have my niece we was told we couldn't even visit her because it was an open investigation so it's so much going on within this that i know that it's bigger than just my brother you feel me or whatever you know and, and just be his character the type of person he is just everything about him and my nieces i mean just good girls beautiful you know and and very young and still should have had uh, all kinds of chances in life great great opportunities and stuff me, there's no way that good people like that could be just destroyed and broken apart you feel me let me ask like you, like the way they have let me let me ask you this and maybe i heard you wrong are you saying that mm -hmm. that there's a possibility that that the father had seen his daughter's dead body is that a possibility i think i have a possibility that she yeah that, yeah that she i believe that she she brung the baby to him because she had she i mean the the from what the man in the um, the attorney office told me he said that the kids got up and they um two of the kids got up and seen i mean and heard the mama in the bathroom with my niece they heard her they only heard it through the which door is, he which said is, which is where you believe that that was where the death occurred that was right where, there that's that where i believe where, it had what, occurred what they, in the bathroom what they, say, what they say here in this document it says that that this girl was struck punched slapped and whipped with Slapped, various objects whipped. over several months leading to her death. Yeah. That's crazy. Let me ask you this, because I've always, and I think a lot of people have, and again, look, the case is already done. It's already done. There's this thing called double jeopardy, which means that they can't be retried for the exact same case. So I don't think we'll be yeah. doing anything at risk, more or less just maybe just public opinion. But if this were going on for several months, the father of me wants to ask, how does the dad not how did he this, not, not how did he not this, know or not stop this? Or even pretend it's a, I mean it's I know for sure no no I, I know there ain't no no what you call it no no no, no manipulation stuff and nothing like that I know that he I know just plain and simple that there was no possibility that my brother could have ever done anything like that because my sisters and brothers don't fight my mama don't play we're we're not that we're my, my, my sisters and brothers and stuff. my mom she's not the black mother that's getting cussed out all by her kids and her kids fighting amongst each other I've never seen my sisters and brothers in fight. That is something that's un, that's not that is not um, what you call it un, uh, unnormal to me. If I see them, if I was to see them fighting, that's no, that's unnormal to me. You know, right. my sisters and brothers them never fight. We 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 never fight. My mom and I just to play that those kind of games with you and nothing like that. To be uh, us out there, oh, and this and, and doing all. We're not that kind of black family. We, 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 uh, and, uh, we, I don't like stereotypes and things like that. We don't we don't follow under that bracket. My brother was thirty years old and he was a homeowner, a first time homeowner or whatever, and and took care of his whole family and 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 anybody else that needed something, you know, did all his stuff. These days, you ain't finding no thirty year old black man as the statistics and everybody else say. Or whatever you ain't finding none of those these days with their own homes and stuff like that and this is from regular jobs not no being a rapper and doing all these things oh hustling and all that no he my brother worked he worked he had custody of both of his daughters when the when his second daughter was six months old from that point on their life was always happy 
Because the pictures and everything sit there and say it, nothing but smiles. So I, if nobody could ever, yeah. Because I think at the time, y'all said he was working like an unusual amount of hours also, right? Like how many and, and, you know, yeah, he, I got, I got, I got his pay stub. I mean, like the little, the, the, the document, um, his W, like W2 forms and stuff like that. Well, basically his pay stub though, because his weekly thing. And I'll sit there and show you how my brother sit there and work 14 hours and, and, and all this stuff overtime on top of that sometime, you know? 14 and 16 hours was the regular, just the regular hours. You talk about, per you know, day, per so day. He, he doing this per day. I got, I got the, what you call them, the slips, um, his little uh, payment slips or whatever, showing how much time and hours he was working. My brother was putting in work, putting in work and, and, and always have and been doing it for a very long time or whatever. For one, just him being who he is and me knowing, knowing him and, and watching this kid from birth, you know, that's number one. That why I know. There's no possibility that my brother did it. For two, there, there's there's uh, um, there's um, other reasons why he wouldn't have had known. You feel me? Because like the the, the baby mom, I mean the baby mama, uh, the baby mama, the baby she burned, sit there and said that every time they would ask what happened to the child or whatever, whatever, she'd say the boys did it or 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 who or it happened at the park and stuff like that. So that's other ways he um, couldn't have known because whatever he listening to whatever she's sitting there saying, ain't nobody ain't nobody going to work every day expecting their spouse or their wife, their husband to be beating on the kids. Mm -hmm. Come on now, to just be beating up on the kids and, 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 uh, and I'm supposed to just study, go to work. And, uh, nobody, no person with a sane mind go sit there and, and be, but do you feel me? And, and you, uh, come on now, you taking care of home, you, you've been raising your kids, all this. nobody's gonna do that unless you've been, you participating up in that. So, and I, I mean, knowing him, he's, he, he would never participate up in nothing like that. So she that. had to come with all those stories and the riddles and whatever, what, whatever else. There was no, there was no, and then even on one of her posts, the post where she cut my niece hair, talking about the baby put the gel in her hair. You remember that one? N not, n not that one in particular. Well, the one where my, um, she, um, it was one that you have you zoomed in on, and the baby was wet. She was heck of wet, and I saw that. I read the ca caption from that too. Okay. But even on that photo, she sits there and says, "Oh, guess what? Um, um, she. That's what she said. Um." This ba this little girl gonna be the death of me, or the reason I'm in prison for the rest of my life. You remember that? Oh wow, wow. No, I think I. What you don't remember that part? I think I would have remembered that. That's that's like. That's what Keisha said a on a picture of my niece. That's a very damning step. You know what, man? I might. Yeah, I do. I, I do kind of remember that. Yeah. She yeah. It was when the baby had a towel around her. She was heck of wet. In that caption, if you read, that's why I sit there and say, I, I read stuff real good. And I, I, I don't read between the lines. I'm reading word for word because I want to know why, how all these got put together and, and who had the brain to do this. You know, what, why does these things mean this, whatever? I'm just deep with it. So I'm not reading between the lines. I'm reading word for word. And, and she says in that post, oh, um, this little girl going to be the um, death of me or the reason why I'm in prison for the rest of my life. She said, she first goes on to say, um, while daddy was asleep, Guess who decided to um, play inside um, my, uh, my um, hair gel? You know, mm -hmm. so that's why the kids was like not trying to go tell him something. Why? Because she was also probably fucking him up. Oh, excuse me. She was probably uh, also messing him up during times where he he at home, but he sleep after working all these hours. He working these seven days a week or, or whatever. You feel me? Whatever, however many days a week. You know. So you felt like all the time. This is a regular. So you felt like so, there was a lot, so, of, a lot of pressure on her to deal with all with these kids, especially kids. No, 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 no. Right. I don't think that it had no. It has nothing to do with pressure. It had nothing to do with pressure at all. You ain't got nothing else to do. You at home with the kids. What pressure do you have? All these sicknesses and all this stuff you was talking about and all that, bro. This that's that's you. But you a a, a workout trainer. You the hottest thing in um in U Jam and all. And she sit there and said that on your show. I, uh, Jay, I remember probably dang near every show like the back of my hand. I, I looked at them videos over and over and over again. You know, all that stuff like that. Just so I wouldn't forget. Nobody voice, nobody nothing. What what people said, details, highlights uh, in my mind. Mm -hmm. I done, I done transcribed it and all the stuff so I could see word for word for word on everything. That's how I sit there and even call when she talking about the the life insurance went up from fifty thousand to a hundred thousand. She said it so quickly. And in the midst of you talking and stuff, y'all talking back, we're, we're talking to each other. She said there and said it so quick. I didn't catch it the first two times or three times I watched it. Because I don't watch that video over. Man, I'm telling you, hundreds of times people could tell you. Man, so much, so many times. I study every, uh, every bit of everything, anybody. Man, 
it's, man, you just don't know. Y'all, y'all don't know how how it's messed, man. If it, it really just and I and I appreciate you definitely spending the time with me. Let me ask you this. I only yeah. really just a couple more things. In your opinion, yeah. do you think there's anything different that your brother could have did to to maybe cause a different outcome, either before, during, or after? He should have. He he should have left her. 2016. That's when he should have sit there and left it alone. You know, he when he when he sit there and what you call it when he sit there and found out um, when he came home the first time and when they arrested him for uh, hitting the kids or whatever. But he was at work or whatever when her cousin called the um, cops. When her, the little the um, the cousin, you remember talking to the cousin, and she said how she called the police or whatever when she came home and she seen my niece with a black eye. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the cousin said she used to live with him. It was Kiara. So much shit leaving out. Okay. It was, it's so, man, it's so much stuff, Jay, that, I mean, that uh, I really feel that, uh, I mean, it, everything should just be out there and should be told or whatever, whatever, you know? And with everything, it's, it's some some weird shit going on with them and with my brother. My brother is so, there's no way possible. And my brother is such a, so much of a good person and stuff that I know that when they sit there and got to talking to him, he don't know the law. You know, it, it, and it wasn't his job to know the law. His job was working in that warehouse, the Staples, and in his lane. You know, he didn't. All he knew about the law is what you don't do to um, get in trouble, and what you do to, that's going to get you in trouble. He, that's that's it. He just know the basics of everybody else. He don't, and 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 he, and he did. If he guilty of anything, it was sitting there being a man. Doing what you're doing, handling his business, taking care of his kids and his wife and his stepkids, all these things, or whatever, going to work every day, providing all the stuff that we talk that you talk about that we talk about here on this show. If all that is real, what a father is supposed to do, guess what? My brother just got convicted for it and sentenced for it, and that's fucked up. It's so fucked up, and everybody on earth sit there and see that. You no, feel me? Everybody so. sit there and see that, and it's too much evidence. It's too much stuff leading up to that and surrounding it that all these people know. And it's like I'm the only person that's out on everything. Everything I'm finding out, bits and pieces of information, and, and trying to and trying to figure out why this and why that. Still, you feel me? So let me let me. Ask it's you crazy. This. Let me ask you this: Who? It's who, crazy. Who was it? Who was it that ended up calling uh, the police or the ambulance or, or, or whatever it was that day? Like who? Her biological mother, um, Letitia Titus. And that whole, they sit there, she sit here the night of the candlelight. She sit here and told me the night of the candle. She stayed the night at my house that night. Me, her, and my cousin, one of my male cousins was wait, the last wait, wait, ones wait, at the hold candle. On, hold on, slow, slow it down for me. Who spent a night at your house? Letitia Titus, the, my niece's biological mother. Okay, go ahead. She spent the night at my house the night of the candlelight or whatever and 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 sit there and told me how she went to the house and woo, woo, woo or whatever and and she went up in there she like she says she said alice if you had seen your brother it was she said i was talking to him and shaking him or whatever talking to him or whatever and said bill we need to hurry up and get the baby and take her to the hospital or whatever we need to call the police she said he didn't say anything she said alice i swear it was like nothing was there like you feel me? i said Bitch, he was in shock she just showed him his dead daughter you feel me and if what that man in that law office sit there and said and I, like i said i don't mind i don't care i would say the name or whatever but i don't know if that'll get you in trouble none so i'm not even gonna do that but look up the, my brother thing his paperwork documents or whatever his his only private attorney somebody within that office told me you feel me? That the, both of these little kids in the middle of the night got up to go to the bathroom. And, and one of them heard my mama up inside the bathroom with my niece. And it sounded like my niece was crying. And the other one sit there and said they walked inside the bedroom. And my and the, she was laying on the floor next to her. And my brother was sitting up on the, on the um, foot of the bed. There was uh, after the fa after the fact. You feel me? After her coming out the bathroom. The, bathrooms, the, her, the bathroom they was in is by the front door. My brother's bedroom was way in the back of the, of the house. You feel me? Any of all, all them kids and stuff up in there. If if if, if he would have if, if 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 it was loud enough for anybody to wake up, somebody would have woke up. I believe that she went in the room and woke him up and showed him his dead daughter. And it's fucked up because they know they got they know they got from from the timeline they know they got witnesses from from prior shit they know they got a pattern of everything that she did and what she was doing with these kids and shit and it's like they let him go down because what they scared of 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 all the bad uh publicity or whatever and and, and to, uh, being exposed of the shit that they was doing and, and the, the hiding and all this stuff like that 
they, they let them they, they let them stay in the house her and her family have access to everything of my brothers the night he was arrested and treated us like we couldn't go to his house that he paid for it and we try to figure out hey if we supposed to be family i was the only one that was able to go in the house only because i had acted like i had befriended her in 2016. i acted like i like her from, from from that time to this leading up to this i sit there and will call it call her call him call my brother or whatever check on him the girls and, and i'm knowing she right there listening so i sit there oh where where to, to keisha at? whatever make a little small talk with her because she's right there talk to her on phone but had i never did that for for them i wouldn't have been able to get in that house that night and i wouldn't have ever been able to see her face to face like i did you feel me and and just get the feel on the inside that house and just what it, what what they was going through up in there and inside that house that, that house yeah, felt yeah, like yeah. that house yeah. felt like when you go in there and if you was to go to sleep or something I mean, you wouldn't even, and when it was bedtime, you didn't even go to sleep. You had to, you was looking from under the cover, peeking, like, 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 is it supposed to come in here? Like, something was just ugly, was supposed to come in there and get you. That's how that house felt. So I can just imagine what everybody in there went through beside her, besides her, because she sit in my face for about 45 minutes, acting like she was crying, running around the house. It says she took all these pills and swallowed them uh, that was in this pill bottle or whatever. They called the police back you're out there that, that night. You're saying Takesha did that? Takesha, this is all the stuff Takesha Carrier was doing the night uh, my brother was arrested. This is all the stuff she was doing, you feel me? The night he was arrested, she had a house full of people. I walked up there, me and my homeboy, my homeboy took me over there, but we, I walked up to the front door first. They had the front door open, but you can't see through with the front door um, with the front door open and the screen closed because it's white. So they had it. They had the front door open so they could see me coming up, but I can't see them on the inside of the house. So when I walk up to it, all of a sudden, heck of people came out of from nowhere. They was all like along the side of the walls or whatever. Because when you first walk in my brother's house, it's it's a long hallway, like little well, like a little short, but it's a nice little ways of a hallway before you see anything else. You feel me? And 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 people came from nowhere all, she had a house full of people that same night all of, she wasn't worried about my brother or my niece and then we supposed to be family like that like uh, like like y'all marriage and y'all vows and stuff all this sit there and saying mm -hmm. or whatever no matter what why i can't why i can't come in the house because her sister showed takisha carrier's sister show called me and told me oh everybody need to get out of um i know she called one of her friends and they gave me the phone she they like um, she said everybody need to get out the house because uh, it's a conflict of interest and all how is it a conflict of interest with me coming up inside the house if, if we supposed to be family what made it a conflict of interest i don't understand that that, that don't this i mean this ain't no business deal no nothing like that this is family what 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 made it a conflict of interest with me going in my brother's house or whatever to see takisha and go probably but i got the messages leading up from takisha leading up to that telling me since i need you come over this this and that and i'm like i'm gonna be there i'm gonna come over there you feel me and that's how I was able to get in the house that night. She faked the whole thing. She acted like she was crying, hollering, suffering, this, that, this, that. She was, she was, she was loving it. She had her Hollywood red carpet moment let and me, all the stuff. You feel me? Let me say this: like I did, I could go. I noticed some of that because I went back and uh, actually watched yeah. uh, two of our because we had conversation. I think two different videos, but I went back and watched uh, one of those, and it definitely seemed like she went from this 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 distraught to just normal yeah distraught. like she would just kind of go back and forth let me ask you this two 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 more like actually one more thing and then we'll wrap up why and and, and we'll try to keep it concise why do you yeah. believe that your brother did not choose to take it to trial was he just afraid that he was going to lose the case is that how he was advised from his uh from his public defender that i mean that, that's what that, that's what they I mean that's what they do and they and, well they said that they were sending people up inside that um inside there when he went to when he got locked up in the hole people was coming from the I guess either the probation they, they were sending somebody up to the um, the public defender's office the the prosecutor's office whoever some somewhere in one of them departments and they in the same building they sitting there they said so they were sending somebody up there telling him like oh if you don't do this this is what you, this is what you're gonna do this is what it what it's gonna be if you don't um, do this this is what it's gonna be you ain't you know, i mean everybody know the whole tactic that's why what 85 percent i'm 85 percent um people is in in jails over plea um um over plea um deals or whatever is innocent you you know and people uh, it is it's crazy that y'all that y'all would know a percentage like that and continue to do it so you believe that, that uh -huh. you you believe that his attorney, the one that was representing him, was the one yeah. that advised him to do that. Yeah, okay. yeah. 
So let me mind you, he just got that attorney probably like he just got that attorney just a couple of months ago. So you don't know nothing about his case. You don't I mean nothing at all. So I mean probably like five like he probably had like five, six different um public defenders or whatever. One of his judges was uh called drunk driving and, and jumped out the car and ran on off and the bystanders at the giddy lied to them and said he was a truck driver. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these type of things was going on. All, it was just so much. Them being censored and one of his judges was censored and all the stuff. You know, the, one of the it's just so much stuff that that is so much stuff around this stuff. Stockton is just not cool. Man, My brother is in there for absolutely no reason. I said this right here. If anything, they should have. If they was gonna do anything with him, it should have been some kind of form of okay, neglect or something like that. You feel me? But you feel me? But it would. It, they have to try to figure out a different sort. Because I'm telling you, my brother would never beat or hit no kids there's no way possible anybody could ever sit there and and give me to even think i know that kid right there i know that man right there whatever and everybody else that my brother has ever made contact with i got so i got letter let statement basically um um character statements after all you feel me um, social media posts all types of stuff about my brother but people that know him they love him and everybody say the same thing there's no way that hundreds of people that don't know each other is gonna be sitting there reaching out to me and, and talking to me and, and telling me the same thing. Right. You're gonna get somebody in there that's gonna say, Oh no, I, I remember this. Or I rem everybody said the same thing. My brother is a, a big love lovable bear, you know? It, it, and wouldn't do nothing like that, no sort or whatever. You feel me? If he was like that, he would have been had domestic violence uh cases and and all this other uh th the thuggies or, or black male uh whatever they uh, persona in the hood type stuff they they try to talk about, they try to link together. My brother was never that at all. My brother was a law abiding citizen. You you know, he didn't know much about the, the law, the actual, you feel me, all the ins, um, the insights and everything about the law, but he knew what to do, what don't do, this, that, this, that, rules to follow, and he did that. If he got as little as a ticket, he's gonna go pay that. He's gonna abide by their rules. That's why he didn't talk to nobody. When they told him, you don't say nothing, nobody about your case, this, this, this. My brother didn't talk to nobody about it. And it's fucked up because I was begging him, begging him to send me something to tell me whatever, keep me posted, whoever trying to um, visit him. Because even her best friend was contacting him. It was people contacting him from her family and stuff, sending messages because they got them little tablet things. You know, ain't no telling what they were saying to my brother, you know, <laughs> and just, and, and then with her sister being uh, working in the sheriff's station, her sister is an evidence tech at the Stockton, um, the Sound King County Sheriff's Department, an uh, evidence tech. You know how crucial that is? <laughs> that's that's totally, that's messed up. That, that is messed up. So all these people, con could be, um, they contacted him, Her, I know for sure her best friend, Christina Goodman was sitting there contacting them. That's why I went off on her the day of the court, um, the, the sentencing day at the court, at the courthouse, in front of the courthouse. Oh, well, you know, I wanted to finally get everything off my chest because I've never seen none of her family face to face. As long as my brother and her been together, I never one time seen her best friend, Christina Goodman, her mother, um, no, nobody, her, um, her sisters. I had never seen none of them face to face. I knew them by picture and picture only. And that for the first time that day of sentencing, I got to see them. And I got to get everything off my chest, off of her, uh, her sister, and off of Takesha Carrier's sister, Takaya Carrier, and her her best friend or whatever, supposedly, um, Christina Goodman. Got off on both of them, you feel me? And I had to let all of it off my chest and, and, and let them know. Y'all knew what was going on. Y'all knew what she was doing. Y'all knew how she is, you know? One of y'all, a couple of y'all cousins told me that, but they knew, they knew more than what they were saying. And I believe that one of them was there also at that house had to be one of them at that house it had to somewhere up in there somebody in her family was there when they when it first happened now they probably left before the po before they caught before the police got there before the baby mama because the baby mama is the to letitia letitia titus is the one that called the police she was she told me the night of the candle like she was in the house with them and when she said that my brother it, it looked like she said alice it was nothing it, it was like nothing was there when i was shaking him and, and or whatever she said it was like he's seen a ghost or something you know no my brother was in shock you feel me? And and she sit there, and Letitia Titus sit there and told me that when she when I said, What was Takesha saying? She said Takesha Carrier told her, Letitia Titus, that y'all can't call the police. Y'all have to help me um um give um y'all have to help me take her to the train tracks and, and and because the police, if they come to my house, they're gonna take all the rest of my kids. So she was talking about dumping the dumping the baby body at the train tracks. Wow. Come on. 
And Letitia Titus told me that the night of the candlelight. That's exactly what she told me. And her and I feel like she should have been arrested for the simple fact in 2016 when they arrested when a cousin called the police on um, on, um called the police on to Keisha Carrier and told and reported that my, my niece had the black eyes or whatever the cousin you did an interview with her it, and, and it says that she says the whole story up on there she said and she um sit there and um she called the police whatever she went and met to Keisha Carrier's sister Takaya Carrier at the corner because Takaya told her that oh if um if when Keisha find out that you call uh cps on her she gonna want to fight you so um just wait till i get there and then call um the police and stuff but when the po when she called him and, and the girl says she, um, um she says she um to keisha carrier's sister takaya on the corner until the police came and she said once the police came she there and um they drove off mm -hmm. okay but when the police and them came what the she what the girl didn't know was once the police got there Takaya didn't already hit Keisha up like, oh, woo, 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 this is what's supposed to go on. She not knowing what the, what the cousin didn't know. Takaya didn't already hit Keisha up. So by the time the police get there, Takisha says, tells to tell them, oh, Billy beats me and the kids. Hmm. Now, mind you, my brother at work, he don't know what's going on. But Takisha says, oh, the, um, the um, Bill beats her and the kids. Had them police really looked at and investigated and talked to them kids or something right then and there? They would have knew what knew what she was doing right then, but instead they allowed her to call my brother and say, "Come home, it's a family emergency." And when he got home, he got arrested for abuse on her and the kids. I got the paperwork of that. I got all that. They know all these things because they did it. The Stockton PD and and all the stuff. You built, you know, CPS. They let all of it ride. Come on now. Mm. And and the whole time he working or whatever. And, and and she didn't and and that that girl says it. Her cousin says it. Um, um says that says um because Big Billy was never really home, so his kids were stuck there with my cousin Takesha. You know, she that girl says that on her interview. She said when it comes to Big Billy kids, it's like um my cousin Takesha is like she hated them. That's what he was. Come on now. That, I mean, these is people calling in, saying, tell, saying this stuff, and all and and these investigators and these prosecutors and them seen that stuff. They seen all of it. That's why I said at the sentencing, the prosecutor, what he was saying, he knew deep down inside. He knew not even you didn't. He didn't have, you didn't have to go too deep down inside. He knew. Period. This sad. man is in here. If we let this, if we let him out, we possibly facing civil, uh, all types of stuff. The right. city of Stockton. They didn't want to let him out. Yeah. They even dropped yeah. his bail sum from um from five um from two from two million in um um two. Uh, two million five hundred or whatever to just two million. From two point five million. From two point five million to just two million, cause, and they had hers at two point. They had hers at two uh, million, but then towards the end, they just um they just sit there and change hers to two point five, and then his to twenty. I mean two million and whatever. Then she always carried one more charge. More she carried a, a more charge. One charge more than his. I don't understand how they sit there and and, 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 got, and, got, and, and man, I, I don't understand this. I, I really don't understand how they got the same amount of time like that or or anything, you know. And that man sit there and got and told them told them that like, oh, everything from twenty six, I mean two thousand and six to two thousand and nine, and all this stuff all trickles down and, and go into one, and it goes to both of them because they linked. No, and this, no, this, and that. He knew he was lying. He knew he was. He knew he was making up stuff and all that. He just they just didn't want to face. No lawsuits or nothing like that. That's why my brother locked up. So it's because the city of Stockton didn't want to face no lawsuit or nothing. But uh, I mean, and it's it's crazy. It's crazy because. Uh huh. Excuse me for that. He just gonna come in here getting the run in his mouth. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, but let, let me, let me, yeah, he he up in there because of that. I, I don't understand how he got all this evidence and all this stuff and my brother in there. Period. I just don't. And, and, and I could go on and on and on and on about my brother and all types of stuff and everything. But, but oh my gosh, well, you know, I just I don't mean, understand. You know, it. We could definitely have. I don't. We could definitely have. I don't. A I don't. Conversation, I don't. And I definitely appreciate you. As of right <sighs> now, it's showing that there. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. So I think we were having some technical difficulties, but from what I see here, and I'm reading this from a document, that's saying that they're both are going to probably be eligible for parole here, April of twenty. 32 which is not that long from now so you know that is basically the conclusion of this i think there's still a lot more 
information that we can get out there. So we're just, when we get it, and when we get an opportunity to put some more information out there, that's what we're going to do. So we'll go ahead and wrap that up like that.